In this video, I'm going to show you how to get PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16, Super Graphics, and PC Engine CD games up and running on the Nintendo Wii U using RetroArch. What can I say? The PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16 are actually really cool systems. They had an awesome CD add-on. And then a new version that upgraded a little bit called the Super Graphics came out a couple years after it. And it didn't do as well as the base system, but it's still a really neat concept. The PC Engine ended up being more popular in Japan than it was over here in the States. And as such, most of the games that you want to play for the system are actually import games, but that's okay. There's a great selection of games to play, so I want to play them. Now, one of the cool things is TurboGrafx-16 games were available on the Wii U Virtual Console, but there was only like 16 or something, so there is a vast majority of the TurboGrafx-16 library slash PC Engine that is just not available on the Wii U, and thanks to emulators like RetroArch, we can overcome this limitation, so let's dive in! To get started emulating TurboGrafx-16, PC Engine, Super Graphics, and their CD counterparts on the Wii U, we need to acquire the games for that system. And this can be done using hardware dumpers, you can dump them from the Wii slash Wii U Virtual Console, or in the case of PC Engine CD games, just rip them directly to your computer using an optical drive. Or, you know, you could always resort to the shady parts of the net, but don't ask me for download links because none will be provided because I don't spread piracy! But anyways, once you have your games acquired, we just need to put them onto our Wii U SD card. So on my Wii U SD card, I made a folder at the beginning of the tutorial series named RetroArch ROMs, and this is just where I'm putting all of my RetroArch games. So I'm just going to open that up, put my games in. And once those finish copying over, I'm just going to go back to the root of my SD card because there's one more folder we need to place if you are interested in playing PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16 CD games. And that is a BIOS file for the PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16 CD system. Now there are a number of different TurboGrafx-16 PC Engine CD BIOS files available based on the system card that you'd plug into the systems. But the one that is expected and the one that will give you the best compatibility is the system version 3 card for the Super CD-ROM 2 add-on. So again, you could dump this with the hardware dumper if you happen to have the actual Hue card with the system BIOS on it. But once you acquire this file, it just needs to be named syscard3.pce. So I have mine here, syscard3.pce. So I just need to add this to the RetroArch Core folder on my Wii U SD card. So I can find that in the RetroArch folder here. Cores. Where's cores? There it is and system. So I'm just going to drop the syscard3.pce BIOS file into that system folder and we're good to go. So once you have those files placed, you can go ahead and close out of everything, pull the SD card out of your computer and put it back into your Wii U. Now just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original Wii U RetroArch install video, so please refer back to that video for instructions on how to get RetroArch up and running on your Wii U, as well as installing a forwarder channel as you see here on my Wii U home screen. But now that we got that out of the way, go ahead and boot into RetroArch, either using the Homebrew Launcher or the Forwarder channel. Once RetroArch is booted up, we're free to begin loading up our PC Engine TurboGrafx-16 or CD Super Graphics content, that stuff, yeah. But to do this, you could go down to Load Core, press right on your D-pad to go down to Neck, and we are looking for Beatles Super Graphics Core here. So press A on that, and let it load, and then we can begin loading our games. And once the core is finished loading, we just go down to load content, navigate to where we have our games stored. So again, I put mine on the SD card, a folder named RetroArch ROMs, and then I've got PC Engine CD, Super Graphics, and Turbo Graphics slash PC Engine games. So then you could just press A on it, press A again, choose a core, and it will start running. But this is an absurdly annoying method, so rather I like to make a games playlist, and I could do this by going down to the Import Content tab, go down to Manual Scan, Content Directory, I'm going to go to the SD card, my RetroArch Games folder, and then I'm going to choose TurboGrafx slash PC Engine Games first. So scan this directory, System Name, press right on your D-pad to go down to Neck, and this is the PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16, so I'm going to choose that first. And then for default core, I'm going to press right to go down to neck, and I'm going to choose Beetle Super Graphics Core. Make sure scan recursively is set to on if you have your game separated by subfolders. 
And then if you have your game zip, make sure Scan Inside Archives is on. But once you have these options set, go ahead and start the scan. And once the scan's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing again with my super graphics games. So I'm gonna go back into manual scan, content directory, SD card, RetroArch ROMs, super graphics games, scan this directory, system name, I'm gonna change this to super graphics. And then the default core is the same. And then again, scan recursively and scan on site archives on if you need them, and then start the scan. And once that scan's completed, we're gonna do it one final time for our CD-based game. And this one's gonna go a bit different. So manual scan, content directory, SD card, RetroArch ROMs. I'm gonna choose my PC Engine CD games here. Scan this folder. System name, this is for the PC Engine CD, TurboGrafx-16 CD. Default core is gonna stay the same, but what we're gonna do differently this time is change the file extension that the search is looking for. If you have properly dumped PC Engine CD games, they are going to come in multiple bin files. So there's a single Q file and then multiple bin files. And if we just do the scan as is, you are gonna get a playlist entry for every single individual bin file and we do not want that. So we're gonna set a file extension that it's looking for as Q, C-U-E. And once you have that typed out, just press start. And then again, make sure scan recursively is on and make sure these games aren't zipped and then just start the scan. And once you've done this for all of the systems you're planning on adding to your RetroArch install, you could just put back out of this. And now when you go down, there will be new playlist entries for all of your PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16 systems. So here we go, PC Engine TurboGrafx-16, PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-CD, and Super Graphics. And now that these playlists are made, we are free to just begin loading up games. So I can just go down to a game, press A on it, and press A again to run. And there we go, PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16 games up and running on a Wii U using RetroArch. This is so sick. And just to make sure our Super Graphics games are working, we're gonna load one of those up real quick. And there we go, Super Graphics Games up and running. And let's make sure that that PC Engine BIOS file I placed earlier is indeed working, so load that one up. And there we go, the BIOS file has loaded and we can begin playing our TurboGrafx-16 slash PC Engine CD games. I swear, being able to play CD-based TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine games is just the best. So for those of you looking to get your PC Engine CD to super graphics or yeah those games up and running on the wii u that is the basic process you just got to get them onto your sd card and if you're planning on doing uh, cd based games you just got to get that bios file otherwise you're free to just begin loading up games no real setup required if you're not doing cd based stuff but now let's talk about some of the advanced core options that are available to us within the beetle super graphics core so if we press the home button on our wii u gamepad it will bring up our RetroArch quick menu from here, scroll down to Options and press A. Our first available option is to change up the color palette. By default, it is on RGB, but you can also change this to Composite. So just a quick example there. It meets the colors just a tad. And there we go. Our next option is for PC Engine CD, TurboGrafx-16 CD games specifically, and it is to load the entire disk image into memory before starting the game. It takes a little bit longer to load up, but it ensures that there's no 
read speed issues with your SD card. I haven't had any myself, so I just leave this off, but if you need to, you can turn it on. The next option is to choose which BIOS you're going to use for your CD-based systems. Again, you do need to have a different BIOS installed into that system folder if you're going to use it, but it is looking for System Card 3 by default. Ignore Detect Games Express CD. And then our next option is for Super Graphics Emulation. So this one is useful for homebrew software. So there's a number of homebrew out there that is meant to run on Super Graphics hardware specifically, but if you try to run it in emulation, it kind of defaults back down to just uh, base Turbo Graphics slash PC Engine and doesn't work right, so you can force Super Graphics Emulation on with this. The next option is to remove the sprite limit on your PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics 16 games. So when too many things appear on the same scan line, it would cause flickering. This option will eliminate that. I leave it off because I prefer authenticity. And next we have a CPU overclock. So for PC Engine games that featured hardware induced lag, you can overclock the emulated CPU up to 50 times to overcome those. I honestly prefer the slowdown. I like authenticity. Again, that's just my thing. But if you have a game that lags pretty severely, you could try this and see what happens. Do note it will probably break some stuff. Our next option is horizontal overscan. I'm going to ignore this one personally. I'm fine with it being on default. And then same thing with the initial and last scan lines. I'm just going to ignore those. Next, we have a couple of options for PC Engine CD slash TurboGrafx-16 CD volume. So you could change the volume of different types of audio sources within those CD-based games. If you know you need to do that, you can mess with it there. Our next option lets us change the emulated CD drive speed. So it starts at a default 1x speed because the PC Engine CD was just a 1x drive. But we can increase this all the way up to an 8x drive to increase load times. Again, this has the potential to break stuff, so I just leave it at 1x. The next option is for multi-tap. I have not been able to get multiple controllers to work on the Wii U version of RetroArch yet. I've just been stuck using the gamepad, so multiplayer stuff has been out of the options so far, and I'm hoping that a fix will come for that soon. But the multi-tap option can be enabled or disabled here. Next, we have a number of options for turbo buttons. So the first is turbo delay. So you can change this from three to 60. Just controls how fast the turbo function goes. And then there's the turbo hotkey mode. So there is no turbo functions. There is an on off toggle button or there is dedicated turbo buttons. I like to use dedicated turbo buttons myself. And then I could set what the dedicated turbo buttons are. By default, they are X and Y. Our next option is to disable the soft reset on the PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16. So by pressing start and select simultaneously, it will reset the game. But if you don't want that to happen, you can enable this option to disable the soft reset. I leave it on personally. Next is allow opposing directions. If you know you need this, you know you need this. It's not something that I need, so I don't mess with it. Then you can adjust the mouse sensitivity. And lastly, we have an aspect ratio switch here. So I leave this one on auto because I have PAL and NTSC PC Engine games on my system. So I don't want to really mess with it. I'll just leave it on auto and it seems to be working out just fine. But with the core options finished, let's talk about control options real quick because by default, the PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16 came with a two button pad. And for games like Street Fighter 2, a two-button pad is absolutely unacceptable to play that game. It just makes it impossibly hard and just not as enjoyable. So going back into the game real quick, there is actually a really easy hotkey to change between using a two-button pad or a six-button pad to make the game run a lot better. So I have Street Fighter 2 loaded up right here, as you can see. And there are only three buttons I can use at the moment, so... It's just so disgusting, and then you use select to change between punching or kicking, like it's not okay. But with this easy hotkey, all we have to do is press the ZL button on our gamepad, and it changes us to a six button controller. And we could just press that wherever we'd like, and we can change it between two and six button at will, just with a simple tap of the ZL button. So games like Street Fighter 2 or any other games that supported the proper six button pad don't have to be limited by a two button pad. It's very convenient and very nice. So normally in this part of the video, I would cover RetroArch shader options, but unfortunately RetroArch shaders on Wii U are a very interesting beast and I am going to make a dedicated shader video specifically for them. So stay tuned for that. It will come after I finish the rest of the core videos, but once you have all the options set for your TurboGrafx-16 slash PC Engine slash Super Graphics slash CD base systems set the way you want them, you can save them as a core override to make sure that whenever you load up a game on these systems, these are the settings that will greet you. 
But that's going to do it as far as TurboGrafx-16 slash PC Engine CD slash Super Graphics slash whatever emulation is concerned on RetroArch. Not too complicated to get this one set up. All you need to do is make sure you have that PC Engine CD BIOS file and you are good to go. But as always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor and be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live. Really helps the channel and I cannot thank you all enough for that. If you're feeling extra generous and like to further help support the channel, you can always check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place running and I am just super grateful to all of you for that. And to all my current champions, thank you for being continually amazing. But that's going to do it for this one, so until next time my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.